Welcome to this video on sperm retrieval. Specifically, we'll be talking about microdissection testicular sperm extraction, otherwise known as microtesting. My name is Dr. Ryan Flanagan. I'm a urologist and a microsurgeon trained in male reproduction. So what is a microtesting? It's a microsurgical technique that we use to extract rare sperm from the testicle in men that don't have detectable sperm in the ejaculate when we perform the semen analysis tests. This is termed non-obstructive azospermia. So the microtessie was developed in 1997 by a mentor of mine, Dr. Peter Schlegel at Weill Cornell Medicine in New York. Since this time, it's been shown to outperform the conventional Tessie procedure, which is a testicular biopsy uh, that's performed without a microscope. And this is with respect to the success in retrieving the sperm, as well as minimizing testicular tissue that's removed, as well as the testosterone recovery following the operation. I often get this question in my clinic all the time. If there's no sperm in the semen, why would we search the testicle for sperm? It's a very valid question. This is because sperm is produced within the testicle amongst tiny tubules called seminiferous tubules. This occurs over about 60 to 75 days. What we have learned over time is that a very small number of sperm may be produced in rare tubules within the testicle that we can identify with a microscope and select these tubules using the microtessie. So despite the entire testicle by and large having a sperm production problem where there is deficient sperm production, that's why we can't detect it in the semen, very rare tubules can have active sperm production and these are what we're going for. So if we look at how we actually perform this, it might make a little bit more sense. We bring the individual into an operating room and they're placed under general aesthetic, meaning that they're asleep for the procedure, they're not aware of this, and they're not in any discomfort during the procedure. We open up the testicle and look at the inside, all of those seminiferous tubules that produce sperm, typically, under a high-powered operating microscope. So we can zoom in about 20 to 25 times what we can see with our naked eye and look in great detail at all of these little tubules. We then search through the entire testicle and try to find rare areas where the tubes look more dilated, they look healthier and have a higher chance of having sperm production. So if you look at the bottom left image here, you can see one tubule in the zoomed box that looks bigger, healthier uh, than all the tubules around this. This is essentially uh, an animation of what we're looking for in the operating room when we perform this procedure. When we find this, we select those specific tubules that appear healthier and have that higher chance of sperm retrieval. We then get the lab to process this and try to find the rare sperm within it. What this allows us to do is to find these rare areas that a conventional biopsy would most likely miss and have a better chance of retrieving the sperm as well as minimizing all of the additional tissue that we'd have to retrieve in order to randomly get one of these regions. Therefore, there's less tissue removed and less of an impact on testosterone production after the procedure. Once we're done, and if we happen to successfully find sperm, then we'll close everything up and the procedure is concluded. Now, if we look specifically at the microtessie outcomes from the literature, there's a lot of variability in what's reported out there, but Collectively, the success in retrieving sperm is somewhere between 46 and 52% if we look at all of the studies combined. There's been a lot of discussion around certain factors and whether they're predictive of successfully finding sperm or not. In fact, patient age and blood levels of the hormone FSH are not thought to predict uh, the outcomes of microtessie despite some of the conventional uh, thinking. Some of the factors that have been associated with increased sperm retrieval rates is an increased testis size. Now it's important to know if we're able to retrieve sperm at, through the process of a microtessie, this sperm can only really be used for IVF ICSI, meaning that we take an individual egg and an individual sperm, inject that sperm into the egg to allow it to fertilize and develop into an embryo before it's transferred. In this scenario, we essentially just need enough sperm to have one sperm per egg. Uh, 
and this depends on how many eggs can be retrieved from the female partner. Looking at the success rates of the IVF ICSI process in this scenario, on average in the literature looking at all the medical studies, the success rate is approximately 24%. This accounts for the chance of sperm retrieval, the success rate of the cycle of performing IVF ICSI, and resulting in a live pregnancy. So all of those factors considered, we arrive at 24%. Now, there's a lot of variables that are really important to consider in predicting the chances of success, and a lot of them are related to female fertility factors. So it's really best to have a face-to-face -face conversation with your care provider and fertility expert here to try to get a good, accurate uh, representation of what you and your partner might experience in this scenario. So in summary, microtestia is used to attempt sperm retrieval from the testicle in men that do not have any sperm in their semen due to a sperm production problem. And this is termed non-obstructive vasospermia, NOA. The average sperm retrieval rates are between 46 and 52% in the surgical literature. And if sperm is retrieved, IVF ICSI is required to attempt fertility. Considering the chances of success with sperm retrieval, as well as the IVF ICSI rates, the live birth rates are about 24%. But there's numerous individual factors that can impact these numbers. And as I mentioned, it's really best to have a face-to-face -face conversation with your fertility expert to get an accurate representation of your individual scenario. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like more information, feel free to visit my website or the YouTube channel listed here and my Twitter handle below. Thanks very much.